This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. It's a very big thing that is happening in those hours. I um, I was spending some time today praying for a few of my friends and I don't have that memory to remember everyone um, by heart without but I'm I'm using my my phone and I'm going through the list and I'm just like checking what's going on with the people with the friends of with my uh, homies and uh, and I'm sending some prayers and after I send some prayers on welcome 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 <laughs> so after I send some prayers so I also send some texts and mention like I feel and from which place I'm coming to pray there is a saying by Rabbi Nachman of Breslev that says that a person should be connected and to feel the up and downs of his Rebbe of his teacher how are you gonna do that the teacher the Rebbe himself he has a divine spirit, he's a holy man. He's got that ability to sense where you're holding. Okay, he can reach out to you in time of your crisis because he's in a different place. He's holy, he's above physicality, he can see spiritually. His feelings, his senses are super sensitive. He, he can tell about you, he can know. Why? Because he is, that's why he is your Rebbe, that's why you chose him, because he's holy at least. We're talking about real Rebbes, real holy people. But you, for you to know where your Rebbe is holding, <laughs> like how, like how I'm gonna know where is he holding, like if he's up or if he's down, like I never up, like to know, I can like, I cannot see behind the walls, I never saw, I don't know what's going on in another person's house, like I don't know those things, so how can a student know the up and downs of his teacher and teachers, rabbis are not usually coming and telling and chatting like, like, like this is why I'm not a rabbi because like I'm always talking. People are like humble going through their own things and especially righteous people. You can never know what goes on in their lives. Like you know, not everyone are yapping like me. So how are you going to know? So I heard once, welcome and thank you for coming. Really happy. So I heard once that the way that a student will know what's going on in the life of his teacher is by understanding that all of his up and downs are because of the up and downs of his teacher. Why? Because if you are attached to someone, if you are tied to him, bond to him, so when he's going down, you're down with him. And when he's going up, so you're rising with him. So when you have your downs, from your downs you should learn what's going on in the life of your teacher. And when you're rising, so don't hold that success to yourself, oh now, Remember your teacher, that he gave you so much, that he helped you in so many ways, and he inspired you, and he is now probably going to places that you can never imagine while you are succeeding in your life. So, when 
I'm praying for someone and I feel a certain thing about myself and I know that there is a connection of love between me and him, between me and that person. I love him, I respect him, I care about him. So immediately I know that if I'm broken hearted, so it means something about him. If I'm down, I know that he's down. I know it. <laughs> like, and we're all going through the same thing. We're all one unit and we need to understand it. The separation is a separation of physicality, of the bodies. But our souls are eternal and we're all one soul. Not only all of Am Israel are one soul. All of the world is one spirit because it's the divine spirit and it's the spirit of Hashem. So it can be different aspects of spirit, it can be a neshama, a chaya, yechida, it can be many aspects. If you want to learn Kabbalah, you can learn there are differences between those vibes of those spirits. Okay, there are differences, but in a way it's all one. In the most simple way, it's all one. Like that you have a head and you have a heart, you have eyes, you have a nose, a mouth, uh, different organs using for different mm, mm, works, different positions, different, different effects in life uses. Also spiritually, there are organs to the spirit of creation. And it's all in the shape of the man and Eve, the complete man, the complete soul. Of, of humanity and under it the layers of, 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 of the wide world spirit. And when you go through something, you must not fall in that trap of the evil inclination that creates that separation to think, oh, I'm the worst and look what I've done and what happened to me. And take yourself out of that box. Take yourself out of that negativity. And recognize the godliness of the process of your life, of what that you're going through. Try to understand what happens in different aspects, in different dimensions, because it's not only you. And it's not that we're happy not to be alone in our position, and we're not finding it fun to know that other people are going through the same. But if you know that it's not only you that lost the way, and you're not alone and everyone are searching together, it brings some relaxation to the mind. I'm not the sinner. I'm not the worst one. I'm, and I'm not the reason for the exile. And all these kind of negative thoughts that the evil inclination is supplying like every moment of our lives. Blaming us and judging us and criticizing us and slaughtering us alive on nothing, based on nothing. Because he is the snake and he is a liar. And everything that he is doing, he is doing in a lie, even to pretend to represent the truth. That's his way to lie in the highest way of them all. That he's pretending to pull you to keep Torah and Mitzvot and telling you, no, it's because you're not doing this and it's because you're not doing that and you haven't achieved this in Avodat Hashem and you're not serving right and you need to commit yourself more and more. Once I said in class, the evil inclination doesn't care from which cliff to push you to death. If it's going to be from the right cliff or from the left cliff. If in the end you're down to the rock bottom, he's happy. He doesn't care to bury you under thousands of pages of Gemara. He doesn't care that you will die after thousands of hours of it. Even more so, you know what? It's a great idea for him. Like, he will enjoy it. He likes that idea. Okay, great. You know what? We'll take a holy one. We'll take a learner. We'll take a one that knows how to pray. A person with senses, with abilities, powerful, that his fall will make thousands of other people weak. That hundreds of other people will fall to despair and to sadness because of that person's failure. So that's a pleasure for him, for the devil. And that's why no matter what we're going through, we must always, no matter which situation and embarrassment we're feeling or holding in life, we must fight that evil inclination, that Yetzirah, with no end. Just to fight with it like it's a war on life, because it is a war on life. And you're fighting for your life and for the life of your beloved ones. 
And I'm telling you that again. The success of that war is that you're holding on in your faith, keep on battling and keep on fighting and not letting his sadness and his negativity to reject you from what that you achieved until today, even if he already destroyed your self-esteem and comparing you to some hopeless and worthless creature on earth, even that drop that you're holding, you must not give up on that drop. Because if you will put your mind straight to understand the use and the greatness and the beauty of that small tiny point that you achieved until now, you will recognize in it the light of God, the light of the Creator. And the light of the Creator is an endless light. Try to put the light of the Creator into a matches box. Close the box. Okay, now it's full with tiny amount of godliness. Okay, now God, Hashem, He decided to hide Himself in that matchbox. He decided. He took that decision. Let's say so. Now I'm asking you, from that box, is He able to do whatever He wants or that now He's limited because He put Himself in a tiny spot, in a tiny place? It's a joke. There's no place on earth that can limit the Almighty. There's nothing in this world that can block the Creator of this creation. All this creation is surrendering completely to Him because He created it and He knows the secret of it and He's getting in and out in any way that He likes. And He can bring all of His bounty through that most filthiest and, and most narrow, tiny channel to the world in a way that no one will understand how can it be. Now when you are connecting yourself to the truth, to the truth of your creation, to the truth of who you are, to the truth of the intention of your heart, to the truth of the secret and purpose of your creation, face reality. I've been through hell, I suffered so badly, I lost my mind, and I lost my money, and I lost my wife, and I lost my children, and I lost my house, and I lost my career, and I lost my learning, and I lost my memory, and I lost my happiness, and I lost my last pair of tefillin, and I lost my, my shoes, and I'm walking barefoot, homeless in the streets, and now from that position, ask yourself, do you still have something in your hand? Do you still have something in your heart? If you have something in your heart, look at that point. Look at that spark of light that is giving you the power to make another step and to drag yourself to a public faucet, to drink a little bit of water, drop of water. What is taking you there? The will to live. The will to continue to tell your story, to fight for justice, to reveal the light, to bring back your beloved ones. Even the desire for revenge, you cannot imagine how important it is. And the Creator Himself said, Kel Nekamot Hashem. He wrote His name twice, from one side of the word revenge, and from the other side, to show us how important is revenge. Revenge? Can we revenge? If that's the truth in your heart and you need revenge, you don't know who you are. I'm telling you, you still don't understand. Because Kel Nekamot Hashem, because Hashem, He is the God of revenge. And He will revenge for you and you will see the results of that revenge. In a certain situation where revenge is blessed and allowed and needed and required, and there it's important and holy. And you, if you will judge yourself all the time, you will lose all your sparks. You're going to lose your identity. You're going to lose your inner connection to the Creator that sent King David to fight in wars and spilled blood of hundreds and thousands of people. And we're talking about the same pleasant, gentle poet that was going with his instruments and playing and singing and, and composing and, and, and blessing and hoping and praying and doing it by the duyot. And in time of war, he knew how to take his sword 
and, and, and bow and arrows and shooting to all directions and killing and, and slaughtering thousands of enemies. How? How can it be? Because you still don't know who you are. That's why it's hard for you. How afraid you are to kill? Are you afraid to kill? You're afraid to kill. Think about killing. Can you do that? No, you're scared to kill. I said to one of my friends, you're scared to kill. He said, no, I'm scared from the police. I'm scared to sit in prison. <laughs> okay, not everyone are like you. Some people are scared to kill. Most people. But King David, he was counting on himself to know exactly when this war is justified and right, and it's a war of Hashem, fighting the war of Hashem, and when it's not. So not every lunatic and crazy person is allowed to take that decision in his hand, but a person needs to understand that he needs to be so committed to the truth that no matter which obstacle will stand in his way, he will cross it, he will break it into thousands if needed and will go toward the truth like a soldier, like a warrior, like a winner, on the goal and the purpose that he set for himself for life. There are places that you should be hard and you should be strong and you should reveal the, the, the flaming fire of Hashem. And there are places that you need to be soft and kind, like the water. Sometimes you need just to wrap with love and, and, and with sensitivity and to care and to feel and to sing. You need to know the truth. I don't mind. I don't mind. You need to feel about yourself. If you're holding in a point of truth, while fighting or while being kind and nice or that you are acting out of fear or out of stress or out of your lusts and desires and then you should put an end to those negative reasons those bad reasons of actions and you should take responsibility on yourself to know when to fight and when to be nice and when to go and to make changes in the world and when to relax and to make few steps back. I'm telling you from my heart something very important for me. I know that we in this world are alone. What do I mean when I say that we're alone? We're here on a mission and the Creator, He Himself shut off the connection. He turned off the, the, the communication with us. He sent us to the enemy's land and now we're over there and he already installed inside of us the plan and the program for our future, what we should do. And he taught us and he gave us miracles and examples and he taught us and gave us the Torah and the commandments and everything that is needed and wild stories on our nation and on different nations to guide us and to explain to us exactly what's the purpose and destiny of our lives. And then 2000 years ago, he turned off the light. Now, after 2,000 years in exile, think about soldiers in Vietnam, after 10 and 15 years, they came back from Vietnam to the U.S. They were not the same people, right? I had one student that passed away. He was a soldier in Vietnam, a Jewish soldier in Vietnam. After the war, he never, even once, and he passed away um, close to 80, elder than 70. He never slept one complete night in his life from nightmares. <laughs> one night in his life from, since the war, since he came back to sleep, like since he went to sleep again. Yeah. Even one night he was not sleeping calmly. Every night nightmares, seeing people dying all around him, his best friends, his commander, whatever. Bloodshed now. That was after 10 years, that was after one year, that was after three months over there, after one year over there. Okay, horrific stories. We are ancient old souls that came to this earth so many times in different lifetimes 
rolling in and out, in and out, in and out, and carrying all the wisdom and all the emotional cargo of those souls, of those people that we were in different lifetimes, and we bringing it over and over to this world, and we are tired. We are broken already. And in that darkness, after 2,000 years of wars and pain and exiles and sorrow and loss and poverty and hunger and plagues and horrible things that cannot be described even in words, only we can feel the trauma inside, carrying all this pain to this world that everything looks so shiny and so ni nice and neat and clean and and in this world of distractions, in this world of lies, in this world of confusions, we need to complete our mission. Now who can complete that mission? If righteous people in ancient generations were not able and begged for their lives not to come back in reincarnation, back to this world in a new lifetime, they were crying for that. Don't send us in the last generation before Mashiach will come. We don't want that. We're not able to stand in that test. They were begging not to come to this dark time. Why? Because they were scared. Because they realized that they won't be able to stand in the tests of this generation. You know why? Because it's impossible to stand in the tests of this generation. No one in this world can redeem himself. No one in this world can save himself. Without the help of the Creator to help you, you cannot defeat the evil inclination. He made of clear fire. He's a demon. He's a ghost. He's the devil. He's all around. You can never track him. You don't know what's going on. He's in and out like crazy. You cannot lock the doors from him. There's no figure, there's no body, there's no height, no weight, no face. He can dress himself in your parents, in your best friends, in your wife, in your children, in yourself, in your mirror, in the book, in the Bible, in rabbis, in people that are being called righteous. You don't know. You don't know where he can attack you in darkness. How can you win? You cannot win. Okay. But should you surrender? No. Why? Because you meant to fight. Because in your bones you feel that fire that you must win that war. And you cannot unless the Creator will help you. So we just need one help. We need Him to save us. So that's why the test is not not to fail. Because we cannot not fail. The test is not to give up. Because the will is in your hand. The hope is in your hand. To keep on fighting, is it, it's in your hand. Because you can decide to keep on dragging yourself, even a breath of a hair every day, one less than inch a day. And it will be amazing if you'll continue doing that for years. Because you're going to show how noble and how truthful and how loyal and how amazing you are in the nature of your creation. You will uncover and reveal the treasures that the Creator planted and treasured inside of you. You will show the world that the Creator can give life to a dead body. That you are a soul that is reflecting between the stones through the cracks of a broken earthenware vessel. And the light of your soul is shining from within by not surrendering. Because I'm telling you that if you will come to me, and I'm just a regular person, and you will tell me I read 1,000 books in my life, it will not going to impress me. Because I'm going to understand that you probably like it, and you love it, and you've been supported to do that. And it was, in a way, easy for you to achieve that. I'm not saying that it was totally easy, but like, okay. Like that a billionaire will come to me and tell me, hey, I'm so and so rich, I have buildings in Manhattan. Okay, it's not going to impress me. I'm not saying I don't want to be rich as well. I'm not saying I don't want to read 1,000 books as well. I do. 
but it's not going to impress me because like I'm tall, I know how to play basketball, I know how to swim, everyone knows something and that's the gift. There was a four years old, today my children told me, a four years old kid went to play chess and, and defeated all the champions from Russia and from I don't know where. A four years old kid win the competi- the wide world competition of chess. Okay, so now what you're gonna say? Look, he's a genius, like, it's not a big deal. He's been created like that. He's got a computer that is much more progress than those old guys from Russia, and he just won the game. It's not a problem. Hashem made him to be like that. It's not impressing. The talents and the gifts that you received from heaven is not impressing because you received them from heaven. I can see. You know what it means that you can see? It's such a complicated creation that you will have the ability to use your eyeball and to see and the light and the signals will come to the brain and will explain to you when you're going to interpret it right and well, recognize the difference between colors and differences of, of, of distance and, and like you're going to know materials and like it's a wild machine. Yeah, but come on, we know that we're just using it. Yet you didn't create your eyes to go and pray. No, but I can see. So what? So thank Hashem. What's your connection to your ability to see? Only that Hashem revealed His loving kindness on you and opened the eyes of a blind and gave you the eyesight, the ability to see. And except of that, you don't have anything. Except of the ability to recognize the godliness that is installed inside of you and to reveal the fact that it's godliness and it's not you, there's nothing else to life. To go and to tell every person that Hashem gave you life, that Hashem gave him life, and like that Hashem made those amazing creations, he can also let him the access and the ability to use those mm, creations, those mm, instruments, those tools in full power, in full capacity. To use 100% of the ability of your eyes. You think that you use your eyes? You maybe use 5% of the abilities of this eyeball. You don't know what it's capable of doing. The eyes of a person are coming down to earth from Ene Hashem Asher Hema Meshotetot Bechol Haaretz. The power of sight that you can see is coming from the divine eyes of the Creator that they are walking all around earth and seeing everything and for Him the night is shining like the day. And he can see the hidden places, and he can see the thoughts of a person, and his regrets, and he's yearning for hope, and for tshuva, and he sees different lifetimes, and he remembers all the things that you forgot, and he sees it all with his eyes, and you received a drop from that ocean, from that endless ability of sight. Now you're going to go and praise yourself on having the ability to see walls, to see people, to see differences of colors. Okay, it's a joke. But when you recognize that it's a joke, and you recognize that you've been blessed with the ability to speak, and to feel, and to recognize the truth, and to see the Creator's supervision in life, and to believe in Him, and to have the good reasons, the good intention to do good, and to go and influence good, and to love, and to care, and to support, and to share. And you have your ideas, and you have your thoughts, and you have your dreams, and you have your goals, and you have your mind that is pushing you to succeed, and to make changes, and to fight for justice. When you realize that, and you recognize the simple truth, of the nature of your creation, of who you are, you're going to understand from that that you are a person in a mission. You're a man in a war. You're a person in a mission. You're on duty now to bring all your thoughts into actions and to make some changes. And it might be that now is not the time for you to act. Maybe now it's the time for you to relax and keep on planning. But plan well. You need to rest maybe, so rest, not in peace, but relax, work on yourself, plan, think, pray, 
prepare and don't back off from the godly plane. From being that part that you are in that godly plan. And you can never know how important you are. Even if you are the most simple person in the world, you can provide something to complete the big picture. And that thing is so needed and perfect that without it, it won't be perfect at all. It won't be complete without you. And the evidence for that is the simple thing that the, the Creator made you. You are here. The simple fact that you are here is the fact that you have a role in this process of redemption. And if you see that you have some qualities and that you have some abilities, for an example, I have a friend, a student, that in their house, friends and students, in their house, they made a class, they opened their house two years ago for a class of, of mine. They invited me to come and give a lecture in their house. They don't live in a castle, they live in a simple, humble house. And into their house came in that night close to 300 people. And no one knows how. No one knows. No one. They themselves don't know. There was barbecue. There was beer. Yes, there were things to invite people. Also, I came. But <laughs> 300 people are many people. Now, a person opening his house. And suddenly he sees that hundreds of people have co are coming. And it's to ring a bell. It needs to light uh, some kind of light bulb in your mind. Okay, I have that ability. You found yourself that you're able to explain a person his way. You found yourself that you're able to express yourself in a very precise way that will help other people to get something. You're able to provide an answer in certain situations. That's your job. You don't know if you will be loyal and going to be found worth it for the Creator to use you. He will upgrade you in your place to places that you never imagined. For an example, I met once a rabbi, his name was Aaron Yitzchak Stern. Rav Aaron Yitzchak Stern told me once that his rabbi, his teacher, Rabbi Yudah Zev Lebovich, Alava Shalom, told him once that every person that did tshuva saw Eliyahu Anavi. Every person that came back to Hashem from darkness, it's because that he saw Elijah the prophet. Without Elijah the prophet touching your heart, you cannot do tshuva. Now I'm asking you, do you remember yourself meeting Elijah the prophet? No, but I'm telling you that Rabbi Yudazev Levovich was not wrong. He knew what he was talking about. We're talking about a pillar of fire, a real angel that knew lifetimes of every person that he was talking to, stories about him. He, was from, he, he survived the Holocaust in miracles and wonders that, that cannot be told. And for, for one example, he tried to escape from the train to Auschwitz. And when he climbed out from the window and he was holding one of the, 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 um, the um, like a, a piece of metal that was, he tried to jump from the train out and there was an officer that was walking on the roof of the train and he came and just put his leg and stamp on his fingers on his hand while he's holding and, and holding for life trying to to escape and that officer was putting all of his weight on his fingers and he was only 17 years old in that day and he said he told his helper that the only thought that he had in that time was that all of his sorrow and all of his pain that he's experiencing, the fear that he's experiencing right now, will help to erase the Avonot, to bring a, 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 a forgiveness 
to Am Israel and that, 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 like, to, to help them to, like, for a complete salvation. He was not thinking about his sorrow. He was not thinking what to do. He was not thinking how to escape. He had that thought in that time that his pain and sorrow will bring forgiveness to the wide nation that are suffering so badly. Such a pure soul, such a holy angel from age of 17, never got married by the way, never had children by the way, suffered horrible life. Now that angel said that no person can do tshuva unless he saw Eliyahu Anavi, Elijah the prophet. So now, you know that you don't remember the face of Elijah the prophet when you saw him. And I'm asking you, do you know, maybe you met him few times in your life. Maybe you meet him on daily basis. Maybe every day he's coming and buying a soda in your store. And you don't know. And every day, he, maybe he's that one that is coming and nagging to all of those clients of yours every day and talking with them conversations that you cannot understand. You don't know. Elijah the prophet can pretend to be whoever he wants. He can show himself as a Jew, as a Muslim, as a Mexican, as an American, as a Christian, as whatever he wants. He can pretend to be an animal if he wants. One time he dressed himself as a flaming fire bear, a bear that made out of fire and ran into a synagogue. Elijah the prophet. He has the ability to change costumes as he wish. Now, do you know how many times you met Elijah the prophet in your life? You don't know. When you hear that the Baal Shem Tov met Elijah the prophet, oh, you can believe in that. Why can't you believe that Elijah the prophet came and knocked on your door to ask for charity? And you gave him 20 cents. Why don't you remember that? Why can't you think about that? Why can't you put it into your heart? that you also have the merit from heaven to achieve big things. And maybe you don't get it. Maybe you don't recognize it. Maybe you cannot see it. But it doesn't mean that you shouldn't believe in it. Righteous people are able to do amazing things. Why don't you believe that you can do it too? There was that righteous man that he was sitting with his helper on the table sitting and talking and there was a tobacco box of tobacco powder all on the on the on the on the table and it was standing like that and while the rabbi and his students are talk his student are talking his helper so the rabbi is taking that box of tobacco from one side of the table and just putting it on the other side and continuing the conversation like nothing happened now his student pay attention to that act and he's asking him, please, Rebbe, why did you do that? And the Rebbe is acting. What? What have I done? He said, you just moved the tobacco box from this side to that side. Why did you do that? He said, oh, I just did it. He said, no, no, no. The student said, no, no, Rebbe. You never do anything without having intention in it. I know you. You're not like that. What was your intention? And he was pushing and the rabbi is avoiding and trying to hide his holiness. And that student is keep on pushing in the end. The student pushed enough and the rabbi had to say. And he answered to him, soon you will know. You don't, you don't need my explanation. You pushed enough. You will know. After a couple of minutes, few minutes, a woman came into town and she's screaming, screamings of joy, ran into the synagogue, opening the Sefer Torah, the Heichal, and she's kissing the Sefer Torah and blessing Hashem and thanking Hashem. People are coming from all town and asking what happened, what happened. She went to put, make her laundry to wash her clothing with her baby in a bassinet in the river. While she was washing, a wave came came and took her baby in his bassinet to the other side of the river. And she couldn't save him. And she tried to go into the water after her baby and the waves were too strong. And suddenly a wind came from heaven and the bassinet with the baby just came back to the other side. Amazing! 
a story, a miracle on that righteous man. Look how great he was, how powerful he was. I'm asking you now, in reality, how many times in your life you just, without being aware to your actions, just took a certain tobacco box in your life and just moved it to the other side of the table? Just with no reason. I just did it three times without thinking about it. Now, how can I know that while I was doing this, I was not saving the lives of few people? Without knowing, saving their lives from dying in car accidents in the highway or in that intersection. Or maybe not people, maybe deers, maybe animals. Instead of crossing the, 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 the road in the wrong time, they regret and went back. Are you, do, do you know about yourself? Do you know? How Hashem is moving the world? I'm telling you, we don't know. Nistarot darke Hashem. The ways of Hashem are very hidden. Very deep and very hidden. And you don't know who you are. And you're a wonderful instrument. You're a wonderful piano. And the Creator is making such amazing music with you. And He's playing with you such wonderful tunes that you cannot describe and you cannot understand the greatness of your soul. You are a physical tool in the hands of the Creator. You're a pen in the hand of an author, of a writer. You don't know who you are and you can't understand the greatness of the Almighty that He created and designed and made it all. But why that righteous man had the ability to see and recognize? Because his eyes were pure. Because he worked on himself not to be selfish and to care about others and to think about others. There was one righteous man that that righteous man was once in a while suddenly disappearing from the synagogue, from the Beit Midrash. Suddenly he was not there anymore. And his students were looking after him. And after a couple of hours, suddenly he was there again. Hey, where have you been? What happened? After two months, a person came. Oh, from a different land, from Europe, from Israel, from no one knows where. He came. Oh, in that day, in that hour, suddenly your Rebbe, he came to our town and he was helping. Stories were flowing into their synagogue from four corners of the earth to tell them wonders from their Rebbe, from their teacher, that he was making those wonders in different lands, in different places. Above time, he would disappear for five minutes, and in those five minutes, in Russia, in Poland, in Egypt, in Morocco, in Israel, he was making wonders in those times. His students, they wanted to know. What are you doing and how are you doing? He told him, listen, I'm not doing anything. They told him, you must tell us. You're making Fitzat Aderech. It's a known concept. Jumping from one spot in the universe to another spot. You have that ability. Tell us how you do it. We are your students. You must teach us whatever you know. Please tell us. And they were forcing, forcing, forcing. In the end, they forced him enough and he had to tell them. Because a righteous man, a rabbi, a real teacher, he must tell the truth. And when he's being pushed, he's seeing that the Creator is pushing him to that corner, he must tell. So when they pushed him enough, he had to tell and he told him, you know what, I'll tell you how am I doing it. When I sense that there is a person in sorrow, I want to help him so much. That the Creator, He sees my sorrow and immediately He takes me from where that I am to a different place to help that person and then I'm coming back. That was His answer. No Kabbalistic combinations, no numeral value, no skipping letters, no, no verses, nothing. An honest, pure will and a 100% dedication and love to His people to souls, to holy people, that He cares and loves them with all His heart. Now you don't know who you are, and you don't know what you're doing, and you don't know what are the results of your actions. When you're giving charity, charity, tzedakah tatzil mimavet, is saving from death. You give one penny, it's written charity on it. So it's saving from death. You don't believe in it. I know. That's why you're not giving enough. 
But if you would understand that charity saves from death, you would give more. And there are more and more things that are making those wonderful effects on life when you're learning, when you're praying, when you're nice, when you're kind, when you're generous, when you think holy thoughts, when you're struggling and fighting to achieve good, to fight for justice, you think that you're maybe making some small changes in your place, you don't know. Those waves can go to such far distance and you can never dream the results of your actions. You don't know. You don't know. But you should believe. You should believe in the Creator that He is so deep and so sophisticated and so great that He made that world in such a wonderful way that you and your role are so meaningful and so important and you're not allowed to give up on yourself and you're not allowed to give up on your beloved ones and you're not allowed to give up on the Creator and on His truth and on justice and on good things that needs to be revealed in the world and like I said before it seems that we're alone in this world alone in our mission but we're not alone from inside we've been divided physically in our bodies and everyone feels so alone and so cut from everyone else and physically you are and no physical connection is a real true connection because it holds the separation the need for physical touch is showing the lacking and the, def the dividings that, that are, are desiring for completion. Physical connection is a, a connection of, of, of lie in many, many aspects. In most of its aspects. But a connection that's based on heart, on emotions, on respect. That's a connection that will hold forever. And in that way, we're all connected and we're all one. And when one is rising, so he's uplifting all the rest with him because they're bond to each other. They're connected. So when you're fighting and when you're completing and when you're achieving and when you're marching and stepping forward, even baby steps, you're pushing the wagon toward the complete redemption. You're bringing salvation to thousands of other people. You made one inch, but you don't know that your friend, he was lack of one inch to get his paycheck, to find his soulmate, to buy that house. And by that inch that you pushed, he bought that house. And you don't know that. And he got married and they got engaged and you don't know that. But you should believe in that. Because that's the way of Hashem. It's hidden and mysterious, but it's bringing us to a complete redemption. Ba'agalau v'zman kariv v'nomar, Amen. Amen. Thank you. That's it. You can go. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.